Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, August 13th, and tomorrow is the first day of school. I am sitting in here right now. I'm finishing up a couple of last minute items. I always come in on Sunday because I just am more awake in the afternoons and evenings than I am in the early morning. So I really feel much better about things if I take a couple of hours or even just, you know, in 30 minutes to an hour to come in and set everything where it's supposed to be make sure that I have my last minute plans finalized. Um, I just tend to miss less things and I'm not running around all over the place feeling stressed out just in case someone comes in to talk to me or you know something like that I can be free. So open house was on uh, Thursday and I have been so busy I really did not get to do a lot of vlogging um, but I did have a lot of little um, projects that I had to do on the last day um, before open house. And then Friday, I just did so much planning. So I really feel like my time was mainly focused on lesson planning. I will tell you a little bit about what I'm going to do on the first day. So obviously routines, procedures, routines, procedures, you know, setting the rules and expectations, letting students take part in building our classroom community, that's like the main focus. However, some of the activities that I'm going to give them to practice these things and, you know, for us to go through those processes. When they first come in, there's always something on their desk that they need to be working on. And we are going to have a healthy active kids time, which is like a 15 minute, like move your body time of the day. But because I do not have to switch with any other teachers, I can flex a little bit my schedule and I feel like I don't want to come in and the very first thing that we do, um, which is the way it's on the schedule right now, is um, have kids hang their stuff up and just do exercise. Like that's not, to me that's too chaotic and then we have to stop and we have to go to breakfast. So I want them to come in. Some of them are going to be more awake than others. I guarantee you some of them will be really tired the first day. So we're going to, you know, talk about hanging our things up and all of that, the expectations. Then we're going to have a seat and work on this. And I think I'm going to cut this in half because it's a little overwhelming to look at. But this is an assessment that tells me their basic math skills. So addition and subtraction. And it's at different levels. So like some of the problems are like single digits. Some of them um, require regrouping and some don't. Things like that. So I'm going to do that set the kind of like expectation for how morning work will be done. And I think normally my healthy active, active kids time, I'm gonna bump to the first 15 minutes of my reading block, which is the next activity after we come back from breakfast. So that's my plan. Um, so we have healthy active kids um, after breakfast. And then um, I'm gonna do some like team building things and I will link some ideas below in case your school starts later and you want some ideas for how you can do like active team building things. But I found a couple of really cute ones. One of them, you um, have students stand in a circle and they step through a hula hoop without letting go of the hula hoop. And it's like working together as a class. You talk about how, you know, that's important, but it's still physical activity. Another one, they have to take one of those larger like yoga balls and pass it um, down the like they they put their feet up against the wall in the hallway and or you know against a wall somewhere where you have lots of space and they pass it down their feet so i'm gonna see if i can pop in the gym to do that one um so that we have plenty of room but if not then we can maybe make it work in the hallway if i talk to my teammates and make sure that they're okay i'm at the end of the hall so i think i could get away with it if nothing else i could probably go into the hallway that's like right next to the gym but i'm pretty sure i can probably use the gym at that time of day because no one's going to be in there so um, that is my healthy active kids plan for the first day but i'm also going to incorporate yoga into that time in the morning um, to kind of like calm all the students some of the students who just need to come in and start the day slowly there's different reasons why that might be a good practice for us so we're going to do some yoga um, we are going to have a chat 
about it during our reading block. Um, first, I'm gonna read the book, Our Class is a Family. Um, and we're going to do some discussion about that and what it means, do some discussion about last year, um, you know, th things that they thought went well in third grade, things that they want to change. And then we'll, that will lead perfectly into developing our class norms. So I'm gonna have students brainstorm, you know, what they want the class to look like, sound like, feel like, and then um, I'll write those things down on chart paper and we'll develop our rules from there. Then we're going to probably break at that point because that'll be like a lot of like more direct um, instruction and I want to give them a little bit of a break. So we'll probably do um, the unpacking of all of our school supplies and sorting them into the right spot at that point. And then we will come back and I have this writing activity for students to do. Um, and I also have this writing activity for students to do. Um, so I think we'll, we'll start with the squiggly line. The squiggly line, they draw um, a picture around this. And then once they have created their picture, then they write a story. This is going to be an assessment of not only their writing, but also their reading because spelling reveals a lot about where the students are um, in their understanding of phonics and how well they can use it. If they're using it in their writing, they're definitely able to use it in their reading, um, unless there's some sort of like a, a disability or a processing disorder of some sort. Um, so that's going to give me a lot of good information and usually kids like this activity. There might be a few who, you know, they don't want to write at all, but because it's something that's imaginative and fun, I don't usually get too many complaints about it. Okay, so that's the squiggly line. That will probably take us through the end of our reading block because of all the discussions that we're going to have about procedures and things like that as we do that and putting away our supplies is also part of the reading block the first day. Then um, for math, I'll give them a little bit more time on this and we can uh, maybe grade their papers and that will give me some opportunity to talk to them about whenever we're gonna do like um, grading their own versus grading a partner's, like what my expectations are. I have this activity that I picked up. I probably won't get it all done um, on day one, but it's something that I wanna do during the first week um, during math time. This is called, what can I do now? And so students have to highlight the sentences that they know that they can do um, in green, the ones that they think they can do in yellow and the ones that they cannot do yet in orange. And so, there's like multiplication, division, place value, geometry. Is that it? Oh, it's on the back. <laughs> it printed on the back. Word problems, money, fractions, and decimals. So um, over the course of the first several days, we will do sections of this. And then we'll probably just um, have like a chat about math. And then I'm going to let them take some time to explore their manipulatives kits that are in their desks and just sort of has some time to like play around with the stuff because I want to have a conversation with them about using those as tools versus using them as toys and I will say okay you need to go ahead and explore them and have fun with them for a little bit but then when we get them out for math time um, when I say that it's time to use them as tools then we need to not be doing anything else with them so that gives them a chance to kind of get those you know curiosities out see everything that's in the math kits stuff like that then getting back to this this is uh, my classroom theme is dream this year as you can see up there um, and this is the same theme that I had the very first year so I'm kind of like going nostalgic a little bit with my classroom theme but I'm super excited about coming back to it since I'm back in elementary um, and I know a lot more than I did then about what I'm doing so that's a plus but I'm having them do these rainbows um, they're going to use tissue paper uh, to make like the uh, 3D design. So they take like little squares and they take their pencil and glue pieces on here. And if 
This is gonna take us a little while, but we'll just work on it. We'll start it the first day and then we'll work on it like in a center um, for minutes at a time. So it's not gonna take any large amount of time out of instruction on any one day. But it is going to be a writing activity as well. And it will make the room look really pretty to be able to hang these up. Um, I'm gonna find a way I think I have a, an idea for how we can make them hang kind of like mobiles without hanging from the ceiling because we're not allowed to hang from the ceiling. Um, but I have some ideas and I'm going to try some things out and then I'll show you when I do it. But I want these to be able to hang by like fishing wire so that they're like little rainbows like dangling. But the students are going to write their dream um, on there and we're going to talk about what is a dream. Um, you know, it could be a dream for this year or it could be a dream like for their life or, you know, when they're a grown up or whatever. Um, but we're going to do a lot of talking about how the things that we do every day um, either help us reach our goals and our dreams or they keep us from reaching our goals and our dreams. So that's going to feed in really nicely to our leader and me. Um, we're going to talk about being proactive and beginning with the end in mind. So we have a lesson. It's our first lesson ever. They've never done it before because um, we're just starting that this year with our school. So um, the lesson I believe for day one, I have to look at it again, is being reactive versus being proactive. And it's like um, you have a can of soda and a bottle of water and it shows how um, if you are being a reactive person, then when circumstances happen that are negative, you shake up the soda and it obviously creates a big explosion. Um, so it's talking about your emotions and controlling your emotions. But if you are um, non-reactive, then you can shake up the water example as much as you want and it's not going to do that. So that's our lesson for the first day. And leader and me um, we have lunch we have recess and then we come back and we have science and social studies and so I don't have my posters here I have to go pick them up in the um, room with the color printer but I'm doing a journey north project with my students um, I have been trying to do the tulip one but I have failed miserably in raising tulips according to the science protocol here in eastern North Carolina I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I, I think maybe it has something to do with the experiment and how you have to plant a certain depth because I believe in North Carolina and we need to plant them closer to the surface. But I've planted three rounds of tulips now and all three of them bombed. <laughs> so I don't wanna put my students or myself through that this year. So I'm choosing a new project this year. We're going to do um, hummingbird and monarch butterfly migrations. So we're gonna track their migrations because that's really interesting. And I'm going to um, see if I can plant, if I'm allowed to plant a few like pollinator attracting flowers out there, or maybe even just put them in pots um, if I'm not allowed to plant and put some hummingbird feeders out here. So we're gonna introduce that. I'm gonna talk to them about it. Just kind of get them excited, show them some pictures of the monarch butterflies. And um, I think we're gonna focus on the monarch butterflies this week, but maybe just put the hummingbird feeder up so that they can watch and see if there's a hummingbird. A lot of them may have hummingbird feeders at home because a lot of people do that around here. It's pretty popular. Um, anyway, it was my first year doing it at my house and I loved watching them. So we're gonna do a little of that for science and social studies really right now, um, we'll be talking more about rules and procedures. So I have like a lesson that goes with our PBIS matrix. Um, so we have like be ready, be responsible, be respectful, all of that. So each day I'm doing like a different aspect of that and talking to them about what that looks like in different parts of the building in different situations. So that's social studies. So normally I would do science or social studies, um, which I think is gonna work really well because our reading actually integrates a lot of science and social studies concepts. So probably whichever one is being integrated, I'll do the other one. Um, and then when we go to a new story, then I'll flip. That's my plan this year, but we'll see because I don't know the new curriculum that we have very well yet. I'm gonna learn as I go. Intervention. 
I feel like I have so much planned that I feel like I'm going to end up needing to kind of leave a lot of my intervention time open. Um, but I might pull a few things as like extras in case I get to that point in the day and we have actually have time, which I will be surprised because there are 28 students in here. So everything that I have them do is going to take longer when we're practicing things because I want like everybody to have an opportunity to show me that they know how to do the different rules and procedures. So yeah, um, I'm going to teach them my organizational time um, routine for the end of the day. So that reminds me, I need to print that out. So I got a couple of things that I need to do in here to be ready for the first day. Um, I'll talk to you about that in a minute, but I think I've got everything printed out except for my OT time or organizational time um, sheets. So my OT time sheets, that is from my very first year of teaching, actually from my um, internship, which was called Student Teaching in Ohio. Um, my like mentor teacher, she did OT time every day and basically you make a sheet and it lists the different things that students need to do to keep, to um, take everything out of their desk, reorganize it, organize their cubbies, all of that stuff and make sure that they're ready for the next day and that they have everything packed and ready to go home. So I'm gonna make these sheets, we're going to laminate them and then they're going to use a dry erase marker on them to be able to, um, check everything off each day. So they'll have one of those sheets in their desk and we'll use those. So we'll practice that the first day. We'll talk about what they're going to do, review coming in in the morning again, talk to them about what the second day will look like. And then I have a read aloud plan. So we'll probably do, in fact, during intervention time, I'll probably have them vote because I have several read alouds that they can pick from that I like all of them and all of them are good um, choices that I don't mind which one they pick. So we'll, we'll decide which read aloud we're going to do and then um, at the end of the day I will read to them depending on whether I have more time during intervention or whether I have more time um, after our OT time. That's when I'll do it. So that is my plan for day one. Um, so right now what I have to do I have a couple of students who um, their name tags got messed up when I was laminating them because somehow I had them like sitting, getting ready to like feed them through the laminator and I'll show you what happened. They went in the wrong way in the laminator. And so, hold on this up just so that my student would <laughs> know where his box was but I explained to him that I would be fixing it for him so like his number you can see where it overlapped with another name tag it covered up his number like the normal ones have a number like that and then it like eight it ripped his name right there so he actually didn't even show up so he didn't even notice it but there's a couple like that so I need to fix those and I need to put numbers on all of my coat hooks. So I would like to put um, numbers on the floor to show a path of where the students need to go to line up because as you see, the way my room is set up, I love the way that I have the desks arranged, but it does make it kind of hard for the students to figure out how I want them to line up. So my thought here, I'm going to um, have the back row line up first. So they'll always be up here so that they're out of the way so that it's easy for kids to move. And then um, kids can move either around the front or in between their chairs that are over here. So I'm going to run my path starting here. I'm trying to decide. I'm gonna start here and then go back that way towards my desk because that makes the most sense to me. So I'm gonna make a little path of where the students are supposed to go so that they know how to line up. I'm gonna have a couple of little things hang up on my focus wall, but if I don't get that done, it's not the end of the world. I wanna label my turn-in bin. That'll take me like five seconds. So yeah, and of course, look at that. That is my lovely bus chart, but it's because I didn't actually hot glue it up there. So everything that I hot glued is staying up beautifully. So yeah. 
anyway all right i'm gonna get started because i want to get this done and i want to get out of here and get home and have everything chill this evening um before i have to go to school tomorrow Trying to find a good spot to put this back up. Running in between the windows somehow. Maybe. Maybe just taping it or tacking a nail or something. I I need your ideas and I wanted your opinion. Uh, well, let me have one end of the string and see if my idea is even gonna work. Here. It's perfect. We can hang nails on either end of the windows and stick one in the center and it'll do a loop-de-loop -loop right there. A loop-de-loop? -loop? What do you mean loop-de-loop? -loop? Like, <laughs> it'll go down a little bit? Yes, gotcha. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I am doing for my first day. Um, I will bring you along with me as much as I have time to tomorrow. It's going to be a little crazy, so I'll do my best to vlog my first day. But until next time, don't forget to work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen. Bye-bye.